All right, this video might be a tad bit ambitious for me to take on where I'm at right now, but I wanted to make the epitome of PGR video, right? Combat. This is going to be the combat quick guide. I'm going to try my best to make this as comprehensive as possible. This one's going to be a bit longer of a quick guide because there's a little bit more to go through. I'm going to try to go through it and explain it the best I can. If I miss anything, if you guys are a bit more veteran players than I am, please tell me in the comments. Let me know. I'll try to keep updated on things in the description and pinned comments. And otherwise, let's get back into it. So first of all, settings, right? This is a combat game. You're going to want to do your settings. So go to your graphics. I recommend doing as high graphics as you can while still being able to hit the maximum FPS that your systems screen can show on mobile a lot of phones can go up to 90 now i don't know if the game on mobile goes up to 90 particularly but uh you can do that if your phone allows you to on computer it lets you go up to 120 that is where i'm at i'm usually pulling like 140 because that's what my frame rate is on my computer but realistically the game's only running 120 right so you want to do that First things first, make sure this is all fine-tuned to where you are able to play at the maximum frame rate with the maximum quality to hit the best of both worlds because this is a very beautiful game and you're going to need the frame rate because in those boss fights, you skip a frame, you're doomed, right? Second thing, team comp. I don't want to go too deep into this one because I should probably make a separate video for it, but if you go into battle... Let's say we go into pain cage and I load up a, a boss fight. Here's your team comp and you have team presets here. The thing with team comps is elements matter. Different bosses have different element weaknesses. For example, in pain cage, a boss that a lot of players struggle with is Kamu. He's weak exclusively to the dark attribute. But honestly, so are you, because dark attribute characters tend to be a bit more squishy for some reason. So you got to pay in mind kind of what they're weak to, because if you're playing against a boss and you're playing, let's say, physical and they resist physical, you're just shooting yourself in the foot, right? So you have to be able to capitalize on the element system in this game. I recommend going into the team presets, building physical, lightning, fire, dark, and ice, and then like a fodder team if you care to with just like one character, probably the weakest character you have, just so that you can in pain cage or war zone do the thing where you like purposefully lose to go further quicker, right? And that's in another video of mine if you are curious, but this matters because you really want to play to the element. The next thing that matters is positioning on the team. Depending on the position, that is what orb needs to be three pinged for their QTEs to be able to activate. Example, I used to have my plume in the red position. I found out that's very bad because plume really likes spamming her red pings. Therefore, having my support on red is very important because now I'm getting damage boosts and heals more often because she's going to be utilizing her red pings more often. Looking at some of my other teams, uh, I believe another one here, actually one that I should probably change is my fire team because Lee, once he's done talking, <laughs> Lee likes using his red pings he likes going yellow into red so i think it's probably fine here because in theory i could blue ping get sophia's buff yellow ping to get the defense shred into a red ping but this is going to change once i get nana mecha uh tomorrow right from pity so this is going to change because the team comp is going to change and you need to have it fit better with your main damage dealer to be able to get the most of your QTEs because they matter a lot in this game. Another example would probably be the lightning team. Here, once Nanami's done talking, oh my god, holy shit. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I have my Lucia Dawn over here because she likes to use yellow pings. Problem. She also likes to use blue pings. I'm shooting myself in the foot having her here. I need to move her over to this middle position. 
because that way I'm making the most of what she's usually trying to ping to get the most of her core passive, right? So this is the best essentially setup for the lightning team that I have currently. This is the best way to go about it because my DPS likes using blue and yellow pings a lot. So it's mostly around your DPS. You want your QTE users to be focused around what your DPS does good. I'm going to have to fix this in a minute. But this is important because it does optimize your damage. Okay. Now, talking about actual in-combat tips, I'm just going to try to rapid-fire some of these really quickly rather than showing them because they're not very hard to understand particularly. But switching off characters recharges your dodge stamina. It's like 30 to 50%-ish usually. Uh, so definitely if you're running out of dodge and you're in the red and you can't dodge anymore, switch. Not only is switching count as a dodge, if you time it right, you also gain like half your dodge bar, uh, bar back. So you can keep, you can keep dodging, right? That's super important in this game. Cause if you don't dodge, you're going to get your ass kicked. Uh, the next one is when you switch, you, your character coming in uses their three ping. It is a pre determined three ping depending on the character that they use uh or that they are but basically if i switched into nanami storm here i believe she uses well one of her three pings right i don't know off the top of my head i don't use her but they use three pings coming in this is important for a lot of teams because for example <laughs> lucia plume when she enters the battlefield, she uses a three ping. Her core passive requires her to ideally use at least one, probably two, unless you're really experienced and have her ultima awaken and all the fancy stuff. Uh, three pings, switching to her ice form, using another two three pings so you get four up, and then using her ultimate signature move thing to deal a lot of uh, damage in a one burst, right? Because that's the way she mechanically works. So getting that extra three ping on switching without needing to press orbs is very nice. It also works with her Hannah memories, which when I three ping enters the matrix and gives me another three ping. So very good synergy there. Another one, for example, the dark team. Luna over here, she has her core passive where when she three pings, she gains energy to go into her annihilation mode. Now, to, her other part of her core passive is when she three pings, she gets a free three ping. That's why you don't need to run Hannah on her for damage, because she kind of does the effect anyways. So, if I three ping switching in, I then get another three ping with one orb. Then if I have a three ping set up with three orbs, I can do it again, and then get another one there, and her core passives basically fill all, uh, yeah, filled already, right? So, it's very, very important to mind kind of switching switching is important it gives you dodge stamina and gives you three uh free three pings and it counts as a dodge if you time it right and you're in a really difficult situation so the other thing as well is if you are ultima awakened you get uh extra pings but that's just basically quality of life boost because you just have a little bit more flexibility with your uh how many orbs you get Whereas for the most part, you're not going to have everyone Ultima Awakened, at least for a while if you're starting out. And if you aren't starting out, you probably don't need to watch this video. But uh, that's another thing there as well. Another one, dodge timing. So if I load in a team real quick, I'll just load in my lightning team to this boss. Dodge timing is important. This boss is going to suck to show though because this boss doesn't do it. But it's pretty easy to time a lot of dodging because there will be a uh, red indicator on a lot of characters and bosses when they are about to attack or any other indicators, right? So I can see his wind up and now I'm abusing the fact that I saw it, dodged it to deal the damage. So for the most part, if you're struggling on a boss, kind of slow down a little bit, walk around and make sure you're dodging their attacks. Now, I just had bad camera angle there. I couldn't see him 
send the attack out at all, even though it's got a little bit of wind up off screen. This boss is very difficult to read because it doesn't have indicators that flash red. So I'm actually going to leave this one and show you guys another boss example that does something similar. Uh, we'll go Kamu, right? As long as I don't instantly get one tapped, because this is one of the harder bosses in the game for me personally, you will see that he does have a little bit of an effect. What happens is the bosses, uh, they have uh, little red kind of indicators when they're about to do an attack. They'll wind up, you'll hear like a, like a boom uh, noise, and then they'll swing. That is most enemies in this game. Uh, some bosses, what they'll do too is they have that effect until you get to like hell difficulty in Pain Cage, and then it gets rid of that kind of wind up, so you have to know the, the uh, visuals rather than having the sound, so it makes it a little bit harder. But for the most part, through training and practice, you can know how to dodge every uh, boss in this game pretty dang well. And if you know how to do that, that's very important because if you don't, you're going to get rolled, as I do. The next one is parrying. I don't have any footage to show you for this. And I don't have any real um, experience doing this myself because I have yet to be able to particularly achieve being able to parry but some enemies i believe it's most enemies and definitely most bosses have a way you can parry their attacks if you see some of the more famous videos for this game uh like blanc and his uh crimson weave lucia or alpha uh videos he will go around and he will slash the boss as they go in for an attack and parry them, knocking them away, essentially, um, and, and kind of clashing attacks. I suck at this. This is the number one thing I need to learn how to do. But from my knowledge, the best way to do it is to wait and stop attacking. And then as their attack comes to you, release the first attack of your combo. Otherwise, obviously, if every attack could uh, parry, Lucia Lotus would be a mega, mega, mega OP character because that character just attacks really fast with a lot of slashes or really any character with fast attack speed. They'd be unstoppable. You just parry everything. So I believe it is the first attack of your kind of attack chain for your basics parries. Parrying's good because you negate all damage and they don't attack you. So... Obviously, if you can parry, go for it. It's risky, because if you mistime it, you're going to get hit. But if you get really good at it, it's definitely something to keep in mind. It is something I have been practicing personally as well. And the final one I want to go over in this video is Time Stop. Time Stop is a mechanic that is coming out soon with the newer characters uh, called the Gen 2 attackers or just Gen 2 characters. What this is, is the characters, when they use their ultimates, their signature moves, right? Stops timers in Warzone, Pain Cage, if there's a timer in there for a boss, kind of anything like that. It, it pauses the timers. This allows you to have more time, more seconds, to your damage the other thing it does it completely freezes the enemies while you are in uh your ultimate and also i believe in your matrix when you're in matrix every so often you'll find you just get hit by a residual attack from the enemy because it's there and you walk into it and it hits you for no reason you're in matrix right time should be stopped with time stop it really is stopped. Eventually, the Matrix being time-stopped is going to be every character. Uh, that's just going to be an update that happens. But time-stop on Ultimates is going to be character-specific to a handful of those Gen 2 characters as of right now on the CN server. So, this is why everyone's like, if you don't get one of the Gen 2 characters, Bianca Bistigma, Lucia Crimson Weave, uh, Lee Hyperreal, right? you break your account 
there is merit to that because without them, you will be left completely in the dust by everyone else on all of the leaderboards of every type of content in this game because you are wasting precious, precious time doing your ultimates and everything when you could be doing them instantly, basically, as far as the time's concerned with time stop. So definitely, when the characters come out, pull for them. That is going to be something that is very important to truly optimize your damage. Other than that, that is pretty much everything combat tip, quick guide oriented I can do. The only other thing I can think of is with your members, look at their core passives in their skills. Other tab right here, their core passive. Learn that, learn how to use it because that is what makes every character work. For Luna, it is she three pings a whole bunch for free, basically, and then goes into a different attacking mode. For Plume, it is she has another mode, and she needs to three ping a lot, and then she does her ult, and it hits really hard. For Fire God Lee, Lee Palefire, his is when he pings a yellow orb, his next red orb skill has extra fire damage in an area. This is something important for him because he normally does only physical damage with it and it's not very high, although it's 15 shots, so it does scale. But adding that extra scaling with fire damage makes it a lot stronger. So you have to pay attention to their core passives to make the most use of all of your characters. Definitely, definitely pay attention to their core passives. Other than that, that's the combat quick guide. I think it actually went a little quicker than I initially was expecting, but it's pretty much it. Get better, learn the mechanics of the game, understand what makes teams tick and, and work correctly. Ask around in the Discord if you need help with that, for sure. Everyone there is totally willing to help at any given time. They're awesome in there. You might get teased a bit, but they're awesome in there. And just optimize your gameplay, get better, get the rewards, and enjoy the combat this game has great combat i cannot reiterate this enough this game has amazing combat in it and i really do enjoy it and i think everyone would enjoy it to some extent even if you're bad at it it's still fun it's challenging you know you gotta learn but i'm gonna leave it off at that thank you for watching um this is probably gonna be one of the last quick guides too i think i've got co-op left to do otherwise i think i've covered most every mechanism in the game at this point so stay tuned for that that'll be coming out soon once i actually catch the timing for co-op and otherwise i'll see you guys in the next video peace